Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. We're back with some more of the number 57 armored puppet kits. And hey, you know what? It says after not having a clue what scale, they're actually supposed to be 1 24th scale. Interesting. Was not aware of that, but now you know something new too. Uh, today we're going to look at the Manhunter Fossil Kit. I want to say they've all said Manhunter, but this one just looks like a fun, silly setup. You've got multiple builds of dinosaur type robot machines so you can see here we have three main variations the tyrannosaur the triceratops and the stegosaur or you just go full-on kerberos mode and stick all three heads on together there's a cockpit huh. was not aware of that this box unfortunately took a little bit of a beating on its way across the ocean but that's okay it looks like everything is inside and you can see here all of the parts layout. We've got cannons for the back. We've got a big, huge launcher, axe, swords, heads, and bones, knees and toes, knees and toes. All right. One thing I'd like to point out also is the fact that this box itself feels and looks substantially larger than the previous kits I've built from the number 57 lineup. And it looks like I lucked out again. We've got the first run parts. I thought I was kind of slow ordering that. So that is kind of nice to see that I got. I'm curious what's in there. Let's find out in a sec. So one thing is really apparent to me, just glancing at the part layout, besides the fact that we have some nice color separations going on, the pieces themselves look substantially larger which is always a plus. I had a real issue, I thought, with the ISIS model and the UN, the Chinese warrior, which I'll grab and show everybody in case you've never seen these before. Oh no, wires. Why is it always wires? Well, I think I found our pilot. We have a little tiny mini chameleon. That seems to be the smallest piece that I have encountered on these sprues yet. I mean, everything else, it's it's totally doable. Fairly decent sized. Nothing too out of the ordinary. I'm curious if they have a section where we see our chameleon friend join us. So it looks like the wire is just for the tail. Look like there were two, but I could be wrong. Maybe there are two and they just have a backup. Actually, that could very well be the case. I felt like when I built the last one of these, the uh, underwater suit with the fish, there were a bunch of extra little tiny pieces, which, you know, given the size of some of that little stuff, it probably was a good idea that it was in the box. But I, I'm not too fussed. This looks pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, built a few of these now. Uh, I think the only real issue, like I said, is with some of the earlier ones, just the size, because like they say, it's 124th scale. They're like a hexagear size, a little bit bigger than like a Megaforce figure. Mega blocks, not Mega Force. Mega Force was those cool die cast like tanks and airplanes. I don't even know who put those out. It looked like a bunch of shoot 'em up bosses and stuff. That's a whole other thing we need to talk about some days. <laughs> Mega Force. I think there's a box at my parents' house full of that stuff. I'll have to dig it out if I can find it. But in the meantime, I'm gonna put our fossil manhunter together and let's see how he turns out. So if you'd like to see too, sit tight. Okay, our fossil armored puppet. It's all put together here. And I gotta say, there were moments that were quite obnoxious and frustrating. Uh, primarily the tail. I can't stand having to deal with the wires. The other thing is he's incredibly sharp. Uh, just dealing with all of the pointiness of him made for some fun times. A couple of parts did need to get glued on Regardless, I know a lot of people just kind of snap it together and call it a day. The heels on his feet were one, and then these white kind of armored parts on the bottom of the foot as well. Definitely needed some paint there. Paint glue. They probably need paint too, but I think they're okay for now. Uh, once you've got everything put together, i got to say overall, it's pretty sturdy. Uh, I could see the legs being an issue with the joints later on, but that's something that I would complain about with just about all of these types of models, not just the number 57 kits themselves. I think it's an issue with a lot of like the Kotobukiya uh, Hexagear figures as well. It's just one of those points on the model that tends to get loosened up over time. 
So it wouldn't be an armored 50, armored puppet number 57, whichever you want to look at it. Uh, call it without a bunch of accessories. In this case, the faces that can't open the jaws anymore. I cut my nails too short and I can't open it. Uh, all the jaws do move. Uh, what was interesting is there was actually a set of translucent parts, and I'm not sure if that was like a first run thing or not, to actually replace the dark black on the interior of the heads. Uh, there are three heads. There is the Stegosaurus right here, the T-Rex, and the Triceratops, obviously. We've got an assortment of close combat weapons. Guns as well. Oh, there's another sword. We've got the pilot, and unfortunately, unlike the deep sea salvage stuff, he is not pre-painted. And he was also a pain to get to stay inside the cockpit, which you do need to, like, pull up on the... I don't want to pull it apart. You have to, like, move the chest apart and open it all up and take the spine off, which then becomes a chore to remove and put back. So I don't want to do that right now. The arms also had some interesting construction. Uh, the way they attach and remove, I don't feel like fighting with it right now. Uh, but rest assured, if you get the first run models, uh, the first run models have these extra claws, like so. And you'll notice on the top or bottom, depending upon which way you're looking at it. Uh, you got that round plug with a kind of squared off bottom. That's because there is a little peg, if I can remember which way it is. There we go. So that kind of locks it in. There you can see it. And keeps it attached. Wrong side of the body. I can see that getting worn down over time though, so you might want to be careful with that. The construction, like I said, the arms is kind of funky too, besides that connecting point. The upper arm is kind of like you build the interior joint at the shoulder and then build around it, which was kind of new for me. Can't say I've done something like that before. There were also various backpacks, we've got a pivotable Gatling gun of some sort. We've got launchers that just pop in right there. And there's also a bunch of spines for the Stegosaur variation that are kind of a pain to get attached and it hurts because you have to attach them over the bone structures on the back and the tail which it did not want to cooperate with me to do. So, they stay off. Now, if you're curious how big this guy is, grabbing some of the other armored puppets that we've got here, the Ryuin being one of the earlier models, the Isis being a more recent one, and then with our deep sea salvage fishy right here, you can see that the fossil is a bit larger than the other figures so far. Grabbing a random hexagear model again, just to give you guys a good size indicator. Um, it is on the taller end of things. But surprisingly, the prices weren't too much more outrageous. So if you can come across these, I gotta say they are definitely more reasonable in price than the Cotopaquia stuff. Uh, they're a lot of fun to mess around with, so if that's an option for you, uh, I'd say go give it a look. Especially if you're not bothered by tiny little parts. That is going to be an issue. Uh, the fossil here isn't as bad as our deep sea salvage fish, but it did take a little bit of uh, tricky manipulation there. As you can see, it is a little bit smaller than the 1144th Gundam, um, but I would say it's a lot more involved in the building than the 1144th Gundam or with the 30 Minute Sister kit as well. So, I gotta say, I've enjoyed these models. I am probably gonna be keeping my eyes peeled for some of the other 
armored puppet kits. Uh, just there's something different. There's been a ton of variation between each and every kit that they've made, and that's something that I'm always looking forward to seeing. So hopefully we'll see more of them on this channel soon. And with that said, then, this has been High Lord Tamerlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.